How's everybody doing this morning? I hope you all are having a good day today. Happy Sabbath day. Happy Sabbath day. This is the day that the Most High have made. So let us be glad and rejoice in it. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. I hope everybody has gotten everything that they need this week. I hope they got everything that their heart desired this week. I hope that um, the Most High have really truly blessed you. Uh, I hope that um, He has given you everything that you wanted. And also, um, I hope that, um, you know, your children and your husband and your daughters or your wives have been blessed over and abundantly with joy. Um, this week has been a fairly decent week for me this week. Um, not saying that you you care, but I'm just going to put it out there anyway. Um, this week has been a pretty good week. Um, but I learned yesterday... Um, me and the Most High was having a conversation the Most High and I was having a conversation I just requested something from the Most High 
and he granted it to me. And then he said, the only thing you have to do is just ask in my name. And um, whatever I asked for, he gave it to me. What I, what I, at that point, what I asked for, and it was righteousness, and he gave it to me. And, um, you know, sometimes the only thing we got to do is just be obedient and ask. And the most I will give it to you. Um, sometimes we think that he won't hear your voice in a time of need. He won't hear you when you're going through things in life. You um, Sometimes we, we act like he don't hear us, but if we are seeking his righteousness and doing his will and his purpose, <clears throat> the only thing you got to do is ask. He may not give you everything your heart desires, but he'll give you majority of the things that you need um, to be successful, to be taken care of. Um, I'm kind of all over the place today because um, you know, I've just been going through some stuff this week. Um, And I've been going through stuff this week, and um, I really haven't gotten it together. I have, but, you know, I've gotten it together, but it's just that, um, just trying to understand what the most I've been trying to tell me this week about what's going on. Um... And just seeing what he was trying to say because um because um you know it's a lot of stuff and I just want to make sure I'm in his will and his purpose but let us go ahead and do um let's do Exodus chapter 20 and do the prayer and then I'm going to tell you a dream that I had this morning. And because I think what the Most High is doing is not what we think He's doing. Um, I don't really think He's doing what, um, what a lot of people think He's doing. So let us pray. Let us read Exodus. No, I'm sorry. Let us read Exodus. Chapter 20, verse 1 through 17. It says, And El spake all these words, saying, I am you who is I am, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage, and thou shalt have no other else before me, and thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in the heavens above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the earth in the waters under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, Yahuwah, thy El, am a jealous El, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahuwah, thy El, in vain, for Yahuwah will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. It says, Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thy labor and do all thy works, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Yahuwah thy El. In it thou shalt not do any works, thou nor thy sons, nor thy daughter, thy manservants, nor thy maidservants, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahuwah made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore, if Yahuwah blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, honor thy fathers and thy mothers that thy days be long upon the land which Yahuwah thy El giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. So let us get ready to do Yahuwah's prayer. 
Let's get ready to do Yahuwah's prayer. Um, let me do something real fast. Yahuwah's prayer. Let me do Yahuwah's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Die to your kingdom, power to your glory forever and ever. So let it be. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning again. Um, Facebook Live with Breaking Strongholds Ministries, um, Orlando YouTube with Orlando Keeping It Simple. I hope how you are doing this morning. I hope everything is going well. Um, I hope that the Most High has prospered you in a way that you would want to be prospered. I hope He's giving you he's giving you what your heart desire and. I hope that you all just been paying attention to what's going on in the world today. You know, I hope you have. I hope you are preparing physically and spiritually for the things that are happening. Um, let me um, let me tell you my dream I had this morning. Um, My wife and I and a friend, we was looking for a place to live. Uh, we, was, we was finding a place to live, right? And, and, um, um, we would find a place to live. And <clears throat> me and my wife, we just out looking at houses, seeing where can we go, seeing what we can do. And seeing all those things, we were just out and about, just looking for a place to go. And we ran across this these these people, and when we ran across these people, um, it was a European guy. We was looking at his house and seeing if we wanted to buy his house and things of that nature. On the first level of the house, just like an ordinary house with the kitchen, the living room, dining room, and things of that nature, but when we went up into the upper, upstairs of the house, <clears throat> this is where everything was going on, and when he showed me everything that was going on in his house on the upstairs level, he was preparing to leave. We was, me and my wife was preparing to buy, but he was preparing to leave. Uh, he was preparing to leave, and uh, he was preparing to leave because of what's going on in the world today. He was getting ready to leave. He had showed me his military bag. He had prepared that. He showed me first aid kits that he prepared for that. He showed me um, everything that he had in his house. He showed me all of it. And he said, he even showed me the Jeep that he had. It was a yellow Jeep. It was an old 1979 Jeep that they had refurbished. I saw all this in my dream. And one of the questions I asked him, I said, well, how long will it take you to leave if I had, to, if you had to leave? He said, it'll take me 15 minutes to leave. He said, it'll take me 15 minutes to leave if I had to leave 
of a great disaster, right? And I said, okay. Then after he told me it took him, it'll take him 15 minutes to leave, I woke up and said to my wife this morning, I said, well, baby, we got to make sure we have everything that we need so that in case we got to go, we may have to leave. We got to make sure we can leave within 15 to 20 minutes. And um, I said, okay. I'm, because I'm thinking that the Most High gave me that dream for that purpose. But um, also, I was just, just contemplating with the Most High and just talking to the Most High. Uh, um, I was just contemplating and talking to the Most High about this and just asking him what's going on what do I need to learn from this what am I what are you saying and um, you know he just telling me some stuff and I was like man what's going on what's going on so what I did this morning I got out the book of Jubilees and I got out the book of Jubilees and I went to chapter I think it's chapter 8 in Jubilees and it's just a refresher and chapter 8 in Jubilees this this is when in the book of Jubilees is when the Most High was se uh, Noah was separating the land masses for the children for his children Japheth, Ham and Sham and it says, and this is the land which came forth for Japheth and his sons as the portion of his inheritance which he should possess for himself and his sons and for their generations forever. It says, five great islands and a great land in the north will go for Japheth. Then it says in chapter 9 and verse 1, it says, Ham divided among his sons sons and the first portions came forth for Cush for Cush and I'm just gonna read because I do research on this stuff and I'm not just gonna read because off the mind I know what it is but I'm gonna just tell you what it is for my studies it says that and Ham divided among his sons the first portion came forth for Cush towards the east and Cush is considered to be Nubia which was Nubia, Sudan, or Ethiopia. And it says, To the west of him, Mizraim, which is Egypt. And to the west of him, for Put, which is Libya. And to the west of him, to the west of him, and to the west thereof on the Sea of Canaan. And we know Canaan is Palestine. So Ham took Libya, Egypt, Nubia, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Palestine. That's what Ham took. So, then it says in verse 30 in chapter 8. And then it said, but it is cold and, but it is cold up in the north. And, and the land of Ham is hot. So the land of Ham is hot, which is Libya, Egypt, Nubia, Sudan, Ethiopia, and Palestine. That is for Ham. Then it says, And the land of Sham is neither hot nor cold, but it is a blend cold and heat. Okay, so when you look at that, you got to go to verse 12 in chapter 8 in Book of Jubilees to be able to understand the land of Sham. And it says, There came forth on the writing as Sham lots the middle of the earth which he shall take as an inheritance for himself and for his sons for the generation of eternity. For the middle of the mountain range of Rapha, Arapha. The mountain of range of Rapha deals with California. Deals with California. And from the mouth from the mouth of the water from the river Atina. That the river Tina is South Africa. So <clears throat> our border is going to be 
from California to South Africa. And then it says, and his portions go towards the west through the midst of this rivers, and it extends till it reaches the waters of the abyss. And out of out of which this river goes forth and pours its waters into the sea of Meda, Meat. And this river flows into the great sea. And it will goes to the borders of Japhat. So when you're going to look at the land of Sham, some are saying that America is part of Sham. Okay. So when I go to the book of the Book of Mormons and Doctrines and Covenants, okay. I'm just going to go to the to the introduction a little bit and read. It says, The Book of Mormon is a volume of Holy Scripture compatible to the Bible. It is a record of God dealing with the ancient inhabitants of the Americas and contain and does the Bible and, for, and fulfill of the everlasting Gospels. Okay? I'm going to read the second part of it, or second second paragraph. It says, the, the book was written by many ancient prophets by the spirit of prophecy and revelations. Their words, written on gold plates, were quoted and abridged by a prophet historian named Mormon. The records get, get, uh, gives an account of two great civilizations, one from Jerusalem in 600 B.C., and afterwards separated into the two nations known as Nephites and the Lamanites. <clears throat> and the other came much earlier when the Lord confounded the tongues of the, at the, the Tower of Babel. This group is known as the Jaredites. After thousands of years, all were destroyed except the Lamanites, and they are the principal ancestors of the American Indians. They are the principal ancestors of the American Indians. So when they're talking about the Lamanites are the, the principal ancestors of the American Indians, which are considered to be the northern tribe, the Lamanites were considered to be, or the American Indians were considered to be dark-skinned people. So this land is really considered to be the land of the northern tribe or dark skinned people of the Lamanite tribe, which is out of the tribe of Joseph. I want to see if I can find it. Nephi 3 and 15, I think. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to I'm gonna try to find something because um, to be able to understand that this the land of the Americas, the land of the Americas was considered to be a blessed land for the Northern Tribe or the American Indians, which are dark-skinned people. So, why am I bringing this up? In my dream, I wasn't leaving. I wasn't leaving my land. The people who came into my land was leaving my land. They were storing up. They was getting prepared to leave. This land because they know that this land is not their land. So that's what I was dealing with the Most High with this morning. I was like, Most High, what is you saying in this dream? Because he was showing me throughout certain situations where, you know, European people are buying these big trucks and they putting all these stuff on the back of the trucks like campers and tents and stuff like that. They're preparing to leave. They're preparing to leave, but their exodus may not be leaving the city and going to the mountains. Their exodus may not be leaving 
Atlanta and going up to Tennessee or leaving Chicago and going to Arizona. They their land their their exodus may be leaving going back to where they're originally from. That's where that dream is that's what the most I was I'm thinking the most I was telling me in that dream because I wasn't leaving. He was leaving. He was the one who was preparing to go. I was taking what he had for myself. Whatever he was, the home that he was leaving, I was getting it. And what he, leave, what he had, he was leaving going somewhere else. So what made me say that is because I'm going to go to Jeremiah chapter 50. Chapter 50 verse... No, 50 verse 9. No, that ain't it. Uh, oh, man, let me see where, I, where it's at. I gotta find it because in, in in Jeremiah chapter fifty. Okay, it's verse eight. Because, okay, it says in Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 8, it says, let me go to verse 7 first. It says, all that found them had devoured them. Talking about the children of Israel. And the adversaries said, we offend not. They said, we, we did not sin. Because the children of Israel sinned against Yahuwah. It says, the, the habitation of justice, even Yahuwah, the hope of their fathers. Then he says, remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans and be as he goes. No, that's not the one I'm looking for. But what I'm basically saying is that the Most High right now. The Most High may be removing, preparing to move, remove them off the land that they invaded. Because this is not their original land. Why would America be destroyed if the Most High had gave Sham this land? Why would the Most High be destroying this land if the original people was on this land was the Israelites? Why would the Most High be destroying this land? Why would he be destroying the land that he gave to the northern tribe of Israel? He may destroy the government systems and the systems that is upon this land. But why would he destroy this land when the land belongs to the children of Israel? That's good. That what I had in my dream this morning is because I'm saying to myself, why would he destroy this land when he gave it to us and the original people was here? So, when I looked this morning, when I got up this morning, right, I heard that the new bill that they just passed overnight was one point some trillion dollars, okay? But then, I said, okay, they, gave, they turned around and gave Ukraine $13.6 billion. They turned around and gave Ukraine $13.6 billion. I said, okay. Then I said, what is the GDP of Ukraine? Gross domestic product. Means how much they earn per year for that country. And when I looked at the GDP for that country for that year, it was like in, in 2020, in 2000, it was... 
31 billion dollars okay then also I think their gross gross domestic product was 13 point uh, 150 something million 130 some million billion in the GDP but I, I said okay so then I divided 13.6 into their gross domestic product of 133 billion it came out to be 15% of their gross domestic product that the United States gave them for 2021. Then I'm saying to myself, why would they give them 15% of their gross domestic product over in Ukraine unless they plan on doing something with Ukraine? Instead of giving Ukraine money to for the military, are they going to try to rebuild Ukraine once Ukraine is destroyed so that they can go back home and live. Because right now what we see what's going on in America is the writing on the wall. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about Babylon, yes, Babylon is a is a country but it's also a system a system that operates throughout the world Babylon is just not just a country Babylon has characteristics it has means and things that you could do how they function Babylon is a functional system because we can't say just America is Babylon because America is tied to Great Britain or the Roman Empire so we can't say that America just going to be destroyed over here because that means that Rome will still sustain itself and still survive so when we're talking about Babylon from my viewpoint and my understanding and the Holy Spirit talking to me and teaching me because that's what the Holy Spirit does it teaches you and gives you talent and abilities so when I'm looking at Babylon and people say, oh, he's going to just destroy America. Okay, if he's just going to destroy America, why is other European countries going through what they're going through? Or is he going to destroy the whole system that exists? That's what I'm saying because... America can't destroy, he would not, the Most High would not destroy his people land when the people on the land came and invaded the land and destroyed, destroyed his land because this is his land because you got to go to the Christopher, uh, the Christopher Columbus, and the, the Christopher Columbus and the destiny of America and Um, I can't find it. But it, it goes into a lot of other stuff because the people on the land knew that they was getting ready to be judged because of their wickedness on the land. That's why the Most High sent Christopher Columbus here to destroy or to punish the people because of what they was doing. That don't mean that he's going to destroy this land. That means that he's going to use them people from afar to bring punishment. And once he had brought the punishment... He's going to remove these people off the land and restore this land. But I was just talking to you this morning about my dream a little bit because it kind of goes, goes along with what I'm teaching this morning about Revelation chapter 18, verse 1 through 7. Because it's talking about the, the, it's talking about Babylon has fallen. When it's talking about Babylon has fallen, is it talking about the system that was created? Or is it talking about the nations that was created? Because we got to understand that this country was never considered to be Babylon. 
this was considered to be Turtle Island or the Americas or something other than what it was before they came here to the Americas. It was never considered to be Babylon. The only reason why it was considered to be Babylon is because the system that they brought into this country and the system that they brought into this country, country came from the Roman Empire. So everything that you see that symbolizes, that's the symbolic things over here in America, is just a symbolization or the connection to the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire. That's the connection. That that's the system that is connected to, and the people that's running this system, not necessarily the land mask in itself. So when we're talking about the America going to be destroyed, I don't think so because the Most High had his people here. Because I, like I said again, let me make sure I read it to you again. It says in uh, in chapter 8 in Jew, Book of Jubilees, verse 30 says, But it is cold in Japheth in the north, and Ham and the land of Ham is hot. Listen to this. And the land of Sham is neither hot nor cold, but it is blend cold and hot. So the only land that has a blend or mixed, mixed climate is America. So when you're looking at that, when you're looking at that, how can you say that the Most High would destroy America when he just gave, it says in the book of Jubilee, Sham is neither hot nor cold, but it's a blend cold and heat. So, is when we're looking at, when you're talking about the Babylon, are we talking about Babylon the system? Or are we talking about Babylon the landmass, which is Iraq, which is not destroyed? Are, 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 are you talking about the Roman Empire system? Because that dream was very, it was very prevalent to me. It was not very, it was, it was like, wow, what is he saying? What are you saying? Because if you talk to most Europeans, they'll tell you, oh, I'm from Scotland. I'm from this. I'm from Nigel. I'm from this. I'm from Europe. Because that's what they can relate to because that's their homeland. They, don't, they would not have a problem going back to their homeland if, if, if the system had failed. So when the most I was just dealing with them, then, I, he brought me to, then he brought me to Revelation 18, 1 through 8. And I'm going to try to hurry up and God because I ain't got number 30 minutes in this. 45 minutes before my camera goes out. But it reads, it says, in verse 8, 1 through 8, in chapter 18 in the book of Revelation. Because it's very important that we, we kind of try to understand what is he talking about when he say these things? What is he talking about? What is the Most High saying to John the Revelator, John the Prophet, John the Revealer? What is the Most High saying in this? Because we have to understand that it wasn't the land mass that made everything bad. It was the people in the system that was brought over here that made everything bad. And that is something that I think we need to die, try to dissect because it's going to tell you in these verses, what was so, how did Babylon begin to be the way it was? Because they say white supremacy is a system. It's not necessarily connected to a landmass. It is connected to the people who created the system. It don't have anything to do with the landmass because the landmass is just the landmass. But those people in the landmass create whatever they decide to create. But that don't mean that the land 
is connected to the land is connected to that people. Okay? So let us go to um let us go to Revelation 1 and I'm gonna read 1 through 4. And the key verse, let me just read one through, let me read, read the key verse, okay? And it says verse 4. Revelation chapter 4, Revelation chapter 18, it says, Revelation chapter 18, verse 4, it says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye not partake of her sins, that ye receive not of her plagues. Okay? And the title of a text this morning, if I may get one, is the title of the text this morning is, The Writing is on the Wall. Because everybody got to make choices. Come to a decision about something that you got to do. And the reason why you make your choice is going to be based on the circumstances that, that the environment that you're in. And the environment that you're in is creates a system. Let me go to the etymology dictionary to pull up the word system. So you can understand what I'm talking about. System is the whole creation, the universe, the arrangement of systems. Okay, meaning set of correlated principle, facts, ideas. Okay, so let me go to the 1828 dictionary. Okay, because I want us to understand something. The eighteen twenty eight dictionary where it said, come on, get to me. Here we go. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to come back to it. Let me go this way for But what I'm trying to talk about, we're talking about a system here. We're not necessarily talking about um, a country because the Most High created the U.S. for us. He didn't create the. He didn't create. Um, he didn't. He didn't. He don't want us to leave this country because in my dream we wasn't going nowhere. We wasn't. We was. Um, we was getting what was rightfully, des rightfully ours. Um, <sighs> we was getting what was rightfully ours. I can't get it. No, I got to find something. But I can't get it, but I'll come back to it. But the 1828 Dictionary. That's my favorite. Um. I don't forgot the word I'm finna look up. But anyway, them, yeah, okay, systems. Um, it's pulling me up to Don Google. It's pulling me up to that. So, but anyway, I want us to understand something. When we're talking about systems, system is just a format in which something is designed to go and how they do things that's basically what systems is it's a format it's a way or a process in which you do things in order for things to work the way they work okay so now when we go to reading it says verse 4 again it says i heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye may not be partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Okay, so now we also understand that this is talking about the fall of Babylon. The fall of Babylon, okay? Then let's go to verse 1. It says, After these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, 
saying great powers, having great powers, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, A Bab Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and become the habitations of devils. And the whole of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Listen to this. This is why I say it's a system. Not saying that I'm right. But this is the interpretation that I got. It says, For all nations have drunk of the wine of her wrath of her fornications. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. That means that they was in alliance and an agreement within this system, within this court, with, within this process. And the merchants of the earth was waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Now, how can you, how can the kings of the earth, that's not what I'm dealing with. But how can the kings of the earth, or the merchants of the earth, are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies unless they created a system that made them rich, or a process, or an alliance, or an agreement, or a confederates to make them rich. That goes back to Psalms 83. Absol Let's go to Psalms 83. Psalms 83, it says, I'm going to just go to... I just read. I go to verse 83, verse 4 and 5. In verse 4 and 5, because we got to understand when they come together and got rich together, this goes back to how did they get rich? I'm going to go to verse 3. It says, They have taken crafty counsel. Crafty counsel, that means that they designed something amongst themselves for an agreement on something. It says they have taken crafty counsel against our people and consulted. That means they came together to form something. And I'm going to show you what. And consulted against our hitting one. They said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. That means they had to create some type of system. Where we could not even understand that we was a nation again. Okay. What do you mean by that? When you look at your applications on your jobs. When you go to apply for a loan. When you go to your schools. Look at your birth certificates. All those formulated from the government. Which is considered to be a system. Okay. So on these applications in this form. This application that the government created. Which is a system. The government has given African Americans or Hebrew people four or five different titles up under that application. They gave you Negroes. They gave you African Americans. They gave you Black. They gave you um, African Americans. All these was up under that system that they designed for you. Even though it's just those those names are adjectives or descriptions of a people. That's not necessarily telling you who that specific person are. They're just telling you. Even when I go apply for gun license, they say black or African American. That system was designed from the United States government. Which took crafty counsel against us. Okay, and it says, They have said, Come, let us cut them off from being a nation, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. Who made sure that that name Israel will be no more? The nations, but how did they do it? How did they make sure that the name of Israel will be no more in our remembrance? What did they create that was so vital to making sure that we understood it? 
And then it says, listen, for they have consulted together, they have, for they have consulted together with one consent, they are confederate. That means that they are in agreement, alignment against thee. So when they did that, right, that means that everybody that was in the G7 had to make sure that everything within that system was against the children of Israel. Everything within that system was against Israel. Because if you want to look at over in Europe and how the Africans was treated over in Europe. How they went to the Congos and ch chopped their hands off and killed a mil hundred million Congo Congolians because of they was going after that. So they was they have been they have been they have developed this system throughout the world to oppress the people. Not just physically, the system oppressed the people. And through the system, the people oppress the people because the system is against the children of Israel. Okay. So now let us let us go and let, let us go to verse four. Then it said, I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of what? Where are we gonna go? Where are we gonna go? That ye may not partake of her sins. How do we know where we get to partake of her sins from? How do we know that what is sins and what's not sins? What's illegal and what's legal? Because the only way we can know that what's legal and is not legal in this system that we're in, it has been made a law. It has to be made a law. It's right now. It's a. It's lawful for gay and lesbian, gay and lesbians to marry. That is a lawful behavior. That is what created within a system. Being a citizen of the U.S. It is a it is lawful for you to vote. And the most I tell you, do not vote. And also when it tells you that they, they, they tell you um about it is okay for you to eat pork. Worship on the Sunday. That is that is written up under the Constantine where he changed the ordinance in 321. This system that they created is how they got to be where they was. Mm -hmm. When you deal with the black code laws, how they how they, they, they just dog us out with black code. And we're still dealing with the black codes to this day. We're still dealing with black codes. You can uh, African Hebrew men or uh, black men and women cannot conjugate together without somebody being suspicious. But in doing the black codes, if two or more black people was together, the police would pull them over, ask for IDs, and they didn't have IDs, they were going to jail. That's why the first thing they when they pull you over, they ask for your ID because that's part of black code. But it's not lawful for you to have a it is not unlawful for you to have an ID, not to have an ID. But the first thing they use against you is your ID, which is part of the black code. The Most High said, come out of her, my people. Let's go to Genesis. That part of the plagues, they made them. Let's go to Genesis. 19. See, the most I always send 
a messenger to his people before destruction comes. He always sends it, he always sends a messenger to his people before destruction comes. And I'm not saying nothing is going to happen in the Americas. But but what I'm saying is the magnitude that some people are thinking I don't think it's going to be that way. And the reason why I'm going to show you at the end. In verse, in Genesis 19, 10, 11, and 12, it says, because he always sends a messenger before destruction comes. It says, but the men put forth their hand and pull Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smoked the men that were at the door of the house with blindness both small and great, so that they were they wearied themselves, wear themselves to find the door. The men said unto Lot, Has thou here any besides sons in laws son in law, and thy sons and thy daughters, whatsoever thou hast in the city, bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cries of them is waxed great before the before the face of Yahuwah, and Yahuwah has sent us to destroy it. The most high always will send people to tell you to do something, or he will tell you to do something. Okay. Reason why I said that because I have a friend. I got a coworker. I got plenty of people I talk to, right? Not plenty, but some. And they said, "Man, if something happen, I ain't gonna do nothing but go to the woods. I ain't gonna do nothing but go to the woods. I ain't gonna do nothing but go to the country." You ain't left Babylon if you call America Babylon. You still in Babylon, Babylon, but at a different location. If I leave, if I leave, say Charlotte, North Carolina, and go to Raleigh, North Carolina, I didn't leave North Carolina. I didn't even leave Babylon. I stayed in Babylon in the same state, but a different city. So how can I come out of Babylon if I'm in the same state but a different city? In Sodom and Gomorrah, yes, he had to leave that location. But in the context, what the Most High is talking about in Revelation, from my understanding, my interpretation of dreams... Is the system that they're in. And I may be wrong. And some people can pull it up and tell me. But it's the system that they're in. Because the reason why I say the system. Is because the system controls the whole earth. The fiat curse is 70% throughout the world. That is a system. You cannot use a fiat. You cannot, you cannot exchange Anything, or you cannot buy or sell anything without using a dollar bill. That is a system. That is not a land mask. So now what you're seeing is systems are being destroyed. Systems are being challenged. Just like the reason why it was going over on over in the eastern part of Europe. Is because systems are trying to come in and systems are trying to take over and systems are not allowing them to come in and take over. It ain't got nothing to do with the land mask itself. It's talking about the system that is created that bring that comes forth. Let's go to Jeremiah 50 and 8. Because we gotta understand. The land mass is just a land mass. But people that come into the land mass create whatever the land mass is going to be. That's how the land mass is created. That's how the, that's how the behaviors come about. The behaviors come about 
from people. Not just the, not from the land mask. A land mask could just be a land, empty land mask. And nothing beyond it. That don't mean it's going to create something. But when the people inhabit the land mask, and start to develop and create whatever it is. That's when the land mass become the character of the behavior. Jeremiah 15, 8 and it reads. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans. Understand that. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans. And be as as the he goats before the flock. Okay. In this verse in Jeremiah 50 and 8, Babylon is considered to be confusion, a thought process, a way of life. It says in Hebrews 1, um, 8, 8.94, it says, Confusion, Babel, that is Babylon, including Babylon, the Babylonian Empire, Babel, Babylon. Okay? So when it's talking about Babylon, It's, a, it's, it's talking about a mixture. It says to, to a, a primitive root to overflow, specifically with oil, by implications to mix, to father, anoint, confound, fade, mingle, mix, self, give. Pre so, so when we're looking at Babylon in this text, let me try to read it better. It says, remove the mist of confusion and go forth out of the land of Shadid and be as the he goats before the flocks. So when we're looking at Babylon, Babylon is a system of confusion because let's let me show you one example of confusion. Go to Revelations. Chapter 4, verse 2 and 3. Because when we look at Babylon, it say confusion, right? But when we look at how they paint the portraits of the Messiah, how they paint the portraits of the Most High, it make you scratch your head. When you people scratching their head, that's a sign of confusion. Okay? Means like that don't sound right. Okay, now let me just go to verse let me go to Revel I'm gonna go to verse I'm gonna go to verse four, two and three in chapter four in Revelation. Okay. It says, And immediately I was in the spirit, talking about John. And behold, a throne was set in the hev in heavens, and one set on the throne. Listen to that. And one set on the throne. And he that set was to look upon like a jasper, a sardine stone. Okay, so now, what does a jasper or a sardine stone look like? This is what a jasper and a sardine stone look like. This is what a jasper and a sardine stone look like, right? So when they saying that this is a jasper and a sardine stone, okay, and then it says, and there was a rainbow around about the throne in sight like an emerald. Okay, so when they say a jasper and a sardine stone, it's dark. It's dark. It has pigmentation. Okay, and it says, and he, listen to this. 
and he that sat was to look upon like a jasper and a sodding stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne in sight unto an emerald. That means that people have been telling you that God is white. But in this, in this verse here, verse 4 and 3, it tells you that the Most High is a dark-skinned spirit, dark-skinned dark um, image. It's telling you that it's a dark-skinned image. But this system, this system tells you something totally different. Even when you see this picture of Caesar Bourget, they said that's the picture of Christ. That's the picture of Christ, or the Messiah, or the anointed one. Okay, then it says, okay, so the system, the system, the system created these images. The people who control the system created these images. Now let's go to, let's, let, let me go to Revelation 1, 14 and 15. And then it says that he and his hair was like wool, not stringy. It not stringy, it says, were like wool and white as snow, and his eyes was as a fire, flame of fire. Listen, and his feet unto fine brass as they burn in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. Okay, so now when you're looking at the feet of of the Messiah. When you're looking at the feet of the Messiah, or the image of the Messiah, from the images that's in Cairo, Egypt, the Messiah looked like this, compared to the image that they had in 19 in 1492. So when you're looking at that, this system, these people created it for confusion the system of confusion so when we're looking at Revelation chapter 18 verse 5 verse 4 the reason why he's telling us to come out of this system <coughs> this whole process in which keeps you confounded it keeps you discombobulated. It keeps you going crazy. This system that they created keeps you this way. You can't even go into a bank loan bank and get the same loan percentage or interest loan that somebody else because they have designed this system to keep you oppressed. It's not the land mask itself. It's the system that is created. Because if you say I'm going to leave and go to ba leave Babylon, where you going? Where you going, actually? That they don't control any of it. You can't go to Canada. You can't go to Australia. You can't go to Jamaica. You can't go to any other Caribbean islands because they are up under the British rule. So where are you going? Let's go to 2 Corinthians. 6 and 17. Because the system made people make decisions that they really didn't want to make. The system makes you do things that you really don't want to do. I'm going to show you another one in a few minutes. 2 Corinthians 6 and 17. And it says, I'm going to go to verse 16 first. And it says, what agreement has the, listen. What agreement has the temple of El with idols? Ye are the temple of the living El. And El has said, I dwell in them and walk in them. And I will be their El and they shall be my people. Listen, wherefore have come out from among them 
And be ye separate, and saith Yahuwah. And touch not the unclean things, and I will receive you. <sighs> Listen, when it says them, it says the reflective pronoun self used alone or in a compound. Okay, so other third person or and with the proper pronoun, proper uh, proper personal pronoun of other persons, her itself, one's or the other, my own said, selfish, or the same. Meaning that you have to come from amongst the people that created the system. That don't mean that you got to leave the land mask. Have you ever noticed? And let us go back to let us go back to Revelation chapter 18, verse 6. Have you ever noticed? No, verse 5. It says, For have you ever noticed when Chinese people come to a country or a state? Or a city, they develop their own city within the city. Little Chinatown, all over the places. Little Italy, all over the places. It is important that they do that because they keep the culture and the heritage that they had within their own city. It is very vital that people do that for their survival. Because they got that they say up in Forsyth, Georgia, right up in four hundred, it's like little Chinatown because they have taken a certain landmass and created it for themselves so that they could be comfortable within their own their own place. That's why he said come out of her, meaning that not necessarily you can't come out of the land mask, but you got to come out of the system that has been designed and created. Because if you don't come out of the system that was designed and created to go against you, how can you survive? Because when you identify yourself as black, I'm a black man, I'm a black man, I'm a grown black man, that's an adjective. That's just describing your pigmentation. That's not even true. So how can you get any representation up under the law when you're not even identifying yourself with a nationality to be able to receive any type of just treatment? Because you're describing yourself on paper as black or African American African American, which is a derivative, meaning that it does not have any meaning at all, meaning that you're not up under any jurisdiction to receive any justice. So when he's telling you to come out of that because you don't even have the proper name up under this system to be able to get justice or treatment. That's why most police officers get off from killing you is because you describe yourself as an African American or a black man. How can an object get how can an object get any justice? No. You can't. You don't identify with nothing. Now let us go to verse 5. Nobody I got okay, I got 15 minutes. More high gracious with me. And it says, for, he, for her sins have reached unto heaven, and El has remembered her in, in her iniquities. She done did a lot of stuff. She just didn't lie to you about the image of Christ. She just didn't lie to you about the image of the Messiah. She just do anything she want to do. Okay. They just gave Ukraine 13.6 billion, right? Ukraine ain't part of the US. 
Ukraine ain't got nothing to do with the United States. Ukraine don't even benefit from the United States. But they just gave Ukraine 13.6 billion. That's not even included before they even passed the laws that people was giving them in contributions from the Americas. But let me tell this to you. We was enslaved by the country from, from this organization, from this system for 265 years, right? And we still going through the oppression of people. I just saw a dude get shot and killed in the hospital. He didn't want to move his hand because he thought the police officer was going to shoot and kill him. And when he moved his hand, they shot and killed him because they said it was a gun that went off and they, knew they wanted to kill the guy. So they shot him 20 times in the hospital. But the guy was saying, I don't want to do nothing because I'm afraid y'all going to shoot and kill me. What they wind up doing? Shooting them and killing them in the hospital. But they can still shoot us in the streets. Do all these things to us. No justification, no nothing. But they can send money to the Israel. The you can spend, send money to Israel. They can get the Chinese people twenty million. They can send Japanese money. They can give. They want to give you Afghanistan money. They want to give Ukrainians money. They want to give people down on the border money. But HR for the commission to develop and st to 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 study and develop reparations. HR for would establish a fifteen member commission to study the effects of slavery and discrimination policies on African American people. You're not going to get it because the simple fact is you're still describing yourself as African American people. And you don't have no, no, you don't have no legal laws or no legal justifications up under the law as you describe yourself as an African American person. That's why they gave you the Civil Rights or the Voting Rights Act. Meaning that it's an act. It's not necessarily a law for you to be able to have the right to vote. Because you're not considered a citizen up under the standards and up under that title. And because you're not considered a citizen and a, and a citizen up under that title, they have to give you the act to vote. Not the right to vote. People who come from other countries who are le U.S. legal citizens have more rights than you do. They don't have to have that right signed every 20, 25 years to vote. But you do. That is an act. That means that they got to go in every 20, 25 years to do it. Jeremiah 20, 50, and 6. This is the reason why all this crap is. My people have been lost sheep. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. Mm. Because if our shepherds did exactly what they're supposed to do, it should have never been a voting rights act or a civil rights bill. It shouldn't be so many killers in the street. If our civil rights, if our civil rights leaders was doing what they're supposed to do, they wouldn't be shaking hands with the president, speaking on public television, working for NBC or CNBC. That means that they're confederate against the same people they work for. That means that they're working with the same people that's against us because they working for them. I can't be against my the job that I work for and expect to get paid from them. He says they have turned them away on the mountain and they have gone from mountain to the hill. It means that because we got these old siren leaders. It made a decrease in stature and volume in every aspect of our life because they have given us this whole bunch of crap. They have forgotten their resting place. If our leaders really care, why in the Constitution they still say we're three-fourths of a person? 
Why they shouldn't have went in there and amended the Constitution to make sure that they, they, they corrected that? Why on these bills, on these applications, and these jobs, whatever you call, why do they go in there and say, that, no, we're not this. No, we're not that. This is who we are as a people, and we need you to correct it. That's what the prophets was talking about in the, in the New Covenant. That's why they had so much problems. That's why they were going through so much, so much issues. Because they was going against the Roman Empire system that they created to destroy us. I'm going to just do something, right? I'm going to read you something, but I need you to go research it yourself. Because I ain't got time. Because I got to finish with Revelations. RNA interference. RNA interference. RNA interference is a biological process in which RNA molecules are involved in sequence specific suppression of genes expressed by double strain. RNA. Through the translational or transcriptional repression, historical RNAi was known by other names, including cold repression, uh, cold transcriptional gene silencing and quarreling. Meaning that the scientists have developed something that can kill or oppress certain genes in certain people so that they could die slow. They say they're using it for diseases, but they, if they, you can, they, they can use it for diseases, they can also use it for other things. Okay, it said, go back to Roman Revelation 18 and 5, and it says, For her sins have reached unto heaven, and El has remembered her iniquities. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her according to her works, in the cups which she has filled, filled to her double. How much had how much she has glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her, for she said in her heart. I am a queen and I am no widow and shall see no sorrow. She said, I'm so bad, I ain't going to see nothing. Therefore, shall her plagues come in one day, death and morrow, mourning and famine. She shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is Yahuwah El who judge her. Let's go to Revelation 9. The reason why I say it may not kill, destroy the land, but it may destroy the system and the people. Revelation 9 and 4. I'm going to go to verse 3. And it reads, and there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them were given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. This is the last days. The spirits is upon the earth. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the green of the earth, neither any green things, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of L in their forehead.
18 again. Now let's go to Jeremiah 15, 29. It says, And the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon to declare in Zion the vengeance of Yahuwah our El, the vengeance of his temple. Call together the archers against Babylon. All ye that bend the bow, camp against it round about. Let none of thereof escape. Recompense her according to her work. According to all that she has done, do unto her, for she has been proud against Yahuwah, against the Holy One of Israel. Therefore, she, therefore shall her young men fall in the streets, and all her men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith Yahuwah. See, what may happen over here in the U.S. is the power go out. And internal strife goes within. But what a war may really truly happen over there in Europe. Because this land got to be saved. If I'm wrong, put it in the box. Let me know. One more Isaiah 47. Seven and nine, and I'm done. And thou hast said, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou did not lay these things to thy heart, neither did remember the latter end of it. Therefore, hear now this Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwelleth carelessly, listen to that, that, that dwelleth, that dwelleth carelessly. That say in thy heart, I am, and none else beside me. I shall not sit as a widow. Neither shall I know the loss of children. See them people over in Ukraine? They didn't think they would ever go through what they're going through. Never thought it. But these two things shall, I, that shall come to thee in a moment in one day. For the loss of children and widowhood. Widowhood means that you don't have a husband. And see, over in Ukraine, none of the men can leave the city to go fight, leave the city to go to Poland. All the men got to stay in there and fight, even the transgender men. They got to stay in Ukraine and fight. They shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of their sorceries and for the great abundance of thy enchantments. For thou hast trusted in thy wickedness. Understanding that it's a lot of neo-Nazi organizations in Ukraine. And thou hast said, None seeth me, thy wisdom and thy knowledge, it has perverted thee, and thou hast said in thy heart, I am none else besides me. That concludes the teaching for today. I could have went on because I could have went to some more scriptures, but I just want us to understand something. Babylon also means confusion, not just the location. It means a state of mind. So, when we're dealing with this, our salvation comes when we get out of the whole system that was given to us. And really truly understand what we're dealing with. Because everything that we know today comes from the Babylonian system, the system of confusion. And when we understand that, we'll remove our We'll remove ourselves from it because we understand that our salvation comes from that. Removing ourselves away from people 
who don't necessarily care for us. Because if they can just send 13.6 billion to Ukraine, send 20 million to Chinese people because they have six people to get killed, eight people to get killed, ten people to get killed, they can get twenty thousand dollars to each Japanese person that was in the concentration camp. They can send billions every year over to Israel. They can give four hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the Afghanistan's, and they wanted to give three hundred and fifty bill. Three hundred and fifty thousand to the people at the border, and they want to study us. You gotta remove yourself from the people in that system in order for you to have salvation. That's where your salvation comes from. Getting away from this worldly system. I was dealing with a guy today. He said, "I know all these pagan holidays are wrong, but I still participate in them." I said, "What does a, a bunch?"